Greetings, JP Astro Guy here again. My name is Paul. Thanks for joining me. Tonight I'm welcoming you to my home actually in Yokohama. I'm going to be doing some astrophotography from my tiny little backyard. I do this occasionally, of course, when the weather looks nice, but mostly when it's questionable. If I don't want to pack things up, go all the way to the park and have a risk that it's going to be a big failure, then I can just set it up in my backyard and hopefully be able to find some target up high in the sky that I can actually see from my uh, small patch of green grass back there. The houses are very close, so I don't get much in the way of any targets below 45 or 50 degrees to shoot for. This is the way to get back there, path between the two houses. Notice how close houses are spaced here in metropolitan Tokyo, Japan area. And here you can see my, my backyard. I've got a little bit of a deck here and a very small grassy area and a couple of trees but not a lot of sky. <laughs> uh, close houses, left and right and front and back. So we don't have much sky to work with up there, but there is some. So let me show you how I work with that. Okay, you can see I got my AZ GTI mount and my William Optics wedge here. First thing I'm gonna do is be sure everything is level, which I've already done. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to try to orient this toward the north as much as possible. In the past, this was really difficult to do a polar alignment because we didn't have the all-sky polar alignment or techniques like that. And I had to use uh, other kind of techniques to do a uh, polar alignment. But now, um, I just have to get roughly positioned. And the way that I do that, let me show you. Hold this iPad basically as perpendicular as I can against a straight edge on the William Optics uh, uh, wedge here. And you can see it's pointing roughly eight degrees or seven degrees or so when it's held against this straight edge. That means I'm seven or eight degrees to the east, which is good for me at this location because mm, the magnetic north is about seven degrees west of the true north. So if I face my mount seven degrees east, then it's roughly pointing at the true north. So I think I'm all set. That's close enough. Uh, I'm pretty well aligned. So if you watched any of my videos previously, you know that I have uh, two other scopes. This is actually my first one. It's the AT60ED uh, doublet refractor from Astronomics. So this was the first scope I ever bought, actually, and I'm going to use that tonight because its, it's field of view is perfect for the target that really that I'm going after. So we'll take advantage of this telescope with my uh, ASI 533MC Pro camera, and this will give me the right field of view for that particular nebula that I'm going to photograph tonight. I probably should have put this on first, but no matter, we're fine. We'll get this balanced up and uh, uh, all ready for this evening's astrophotography session. The other thing that you might notice here is I have this set up uh, actually very high. I don't normally do this uh, when I'm out in an open field someplace. I'll keep it as low as possible to avoid the wind and it's a little bit more convenient. But here in the backyard, I need to actually get as high as possible because I'll be shooting over the top of the roof here, and I want to have as much of this angle as I can in order to maximize my tracking time up there. So that's the reason I got it set so high. And back here, between all these houses, wind is usually never a problem.
Okay, I need to be a little bit quiet because as you can see, almost all the lights are out. It's after midnight here and all the neighbors are sleeping. So tonight I'm going after the Seder region. There's a lots of uh, nebula in that, in that area. I've never photographed this before. So I'm doing three minute exposures and I figure I can get about three, maybe four hours worth of time. So we shall see. Things are going well. I put the uh, dew straps on because later on in the early morning hours, the humidity is going up quite high. So I want to be prepared. I'm going to let this run. I'm not going to do a meridian flip. I think I'll be okay. And, uh, but I will let it automatically shut down when it's finished because I'm going to go in and go to bed. On the northern end of the Great Rift of the Milky Way is a star known as Sadr, S-A-D-R. Its technical name is Gamma Cygni. This star is a fairly unusual class of supergiant in that it is mid-range in temperature and yellow-white in color, similar to our Sun. However, Sadr is much larger and 65,000 times brighter than our Sun, and it shines at a magnitude 2.2 in our skies. Surprisingly, that is also with half its luminosity dimmed through absorption by interstellar dust located between us and the star. Sater is not actually positionally associated with the Gamma Cygni Nebulae. It is a foreground star located about 750 light years away. Estimates for the nebula are around 2,000 to 5,000 light years distant. Sater is in the process of dying and may have enough mass to eventually go supernova but no one really knows. The Gamma Cygni Nebula features a complex of stars, one star cluster, dark dust clouds, and glowing nebula. It spans over three degrees of sky, which is about six full moons, and is located deep in the Orion arm of the galaxy. Its visual brightness is estimated at around magnitude 10. It is a beautiful splash of red patterns painted in the sky just beyond the reach of our vision. Frankly, I am constantly amazed at how much exists up there in the heavens that we, as amateur photographers, can capture with modern imaging technologies. When I first started attempting backyard astrophotography less than a year ago, it was extremely difficult because I could not easily polar align my telescope mount. I cannot see Polaris, the celestial north pole, in my backyard. I sometimes spent hours using old school star drift alignment techniques that were rather challenging. Fairly recently, with polar alignment features like the all-sky polar alignment on the ASI Air Astro Computer, this is no longer an issue. I may have very limited views of the night sky in my tiny backyard, but over the course of the year, there are many, many interesting nebula and galaxy targets that cross the zenith. Well, that is about it. I want to thank you again for joining me on my backyard adventure for Astrophotography Japan. Here's wishing you clear skies and exciting adventures of your own. My name is Paul Cheese Joe, 
and I am an astrophotographer.